And you're you're from Canada. Yeah. One of the 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 biggest um, phenomenon of the last couple of years has been Jordan Peterson. Yeah. What have you made of of him, his rise, and what it says about the culture that people are so thirsting for what he's talking about? Peterson, first of all, is very bright, extraordinarily articulate, and in some ways a compelling speaker. So he's an, he's an attractive figure in some ways. When I read him, I sense a lot of suppressed rage in him. I, I, in fact, I think his voice is choking with rage a lot of the time. It's interesting because he talks about rage, that you have to deal with it. I don't think he understands just how angry he is. And, it's, and, and, and if you look at his websites, the comments are full of rage by his young acolytes. Now that's an energetic thing. That, that it's his energy that draws people as much as what he actually teaches. Secondly, he teaches repression. I mean, he, he very rightly takes an issue where somebody mandates a certain kind of language, and he very rightly and righteously says that I will not be dictated to about what language I'm going to use. Well, good for him. I'm all in favor of not mandating language on the one hand. On the other hand, he basically advocates repression. Uh, in his book, he talks about how an angry two-year-old child needs to be sit by themselves until they get over it. Rather than understanding why a child would be angry at age two, what frustrations they're having, and what human contact they need to help them move through that anger, he says repress the anger. So he's all about repressed anger, as far as I'm concerned. And it's very interesting how he talks about children. He talks about little varmints and little monsters and so on. I know that's meant to be humorous, but it's also a certain way of thinking of the young human child. So fundamentally, I see him as an agent of repression. He posing as an agent of libertarianism. Not to mention, he's got this bee in his bonnet about what he considers to be, seems to consider to be conspiracies by left-wing intellectuals. They seem to be his bet noir. Uh, being a left-wing intellectual myself, I like to talk to him sometimes. What are you so upset about, Jordan? What are you so afraid of? You know, he talks about these bloody Marxists. And, 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 he, and he points out very accurately all the horror that occurred under so-called Marxist regimes particularly in the Soviet Union. He's absolutely accurate about that. But then he promotes Christianity. Shall I tell him about the mass murders that occurred in the name of Christianity? Shall I tell him about all the millions that were slaughtered in the names of the gentle Jesus? In other words, let's be fair about it. Uh, he seems to pick ideologies to attack and abhor and embrace other ideologies that are just as murderous in practice sometimes. It's a much more interesting question for me. What happened in Eastern Europe? How come under an ideology that was meant to be liberated people, so many people were oppressed? I come from Eastern Europe. I was born in Hungary. He doesn't have to tell me about what it was like. But how about asking, how come uh, a religious philosophy that was meant to promote love and acceptance and compassion has become such an agent of two millennia of repression, oppression, and, 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 and killing. So can we be objective, or are we going to be simply tribal about it? I have a lot to say to Jordan, or a lot to, as much as I appreciate, actually, some of what he says. And as interesting as I find him, I think he's a very mixed figure, largely an agent of, of repression.